Hey everybody, today we're getting a little bit more specific with our talk about best critical regions. We're going to go into the Neiman Pearson lemma and do an example where we actually have to determine a best critical region for a familiar sort of significance test. So first quick review of the basic definition. Um, a critical region is going to be some subset of Rn, where n is our sample size, um, where its size is alpha, where alpha is the significance level of the test typically size in the probabilistic sense. Probability of randomly selecting a point in that region when the null hypothesis is true is equal to alpha. The word best refers to the fact that when the alternative hypothesis is true, the probability of randomly selecting a point in that region is at least as high as it is for any other region in Rn. In other words, the region should be the one of the, with the greatest statistical power. What we do not have is any particular way of determining such a region. So that's our task right now. Let's start just with some general considerations about what a good region should look like. And the way to think about this is to imagine building up that critical region from scratch, one point at a time. What are good points to add to the set C when we start off? So there are two things to consider. First of all, um, we'd like to add points that have high, high likelihood under HA. The whole point is that when HA is true, um, the probability of randomly selecting points in C should be high. Secondly, points in C should have low likelihood under H0. So I already mentioned why the reason for the first is clear. What about the second? So this is a principle of economy. The restriction on the size of the critical region alpha means that we only have so much space to work with and so when we choose points to put in C we want to try and be um, try and take the cheapest first the ones with the lowest cost so summarizing all of this it makes a certain degree of sense that we want to take points with small likelihood ratios um, that is the likelihood function under the null hypothesis divided by the likelihood function under the alternative hypothesis should be small. Um, again, remember that a likelihood function is just a joint PDF that is being viewed as a function of some parameter. So the idea that we want this ratio to be small is um, formalized in the Neiman-Pearson lemma. So here it is. Here, it's, here, by the way, it's stated just for population means mu. This um, is generalizable. You can say it for any parameter, not just mu. So suppose we have a sample of size n, so we have sample random variables x1 up to xn, and they're all coming from the same probability distribution. The PDF is f of x semicolon mu, um, and there should only be two possible means um, mu, either mu naught or mu1. If c is a critical region of size alpha and there exists a constant such that that likelihood ratio is less than or equal to that constant for points in C and greater than or equal to that constant for points out of C, then C is the best critical region of size alpha. For testing the simple hypotheses, H0 mu equals mu0 against HA mu equals mu A. So let's go through an example and try and make this concrete in terms of how we would actually apply this. So here are some simple hypotheses, um, mu equal 50 versus mu equal 52. The basic idea is we'd like to distinguish between the two of these. Our expectation is that it's probably, it probably should look like the sample mean is greater than or equal to some value. So let's hope to establish that. We're going to assume that we're sampling from a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation 5. Let's actually compute this likelihood ratio. So um, as I said, the likelihood function is the joint PDF viewed as a function of the parameter, in this case mu. Bear in mind that the joint PDF is talking about identically distributed independent random variables. So the joint PDF can be written as a product of the individual PDFs. That's what we're seeing here on the right. So now let's replace the Fs with the actual PDF for the normal distribution. So the PDF for the normal distribution, 1 over sigma times the square root of 2 pi 
times the exponential function negative x minus mu quantity squared over 2 sigma squared. So that's where the products in the top and bottom are coming from. There's lots of simplifications here. Right away, we see that there's the common factors of 1 over 5 root 2 pi. There's n of those on the top, n of those on the bottom. They immediately cancel. Um, we've also got products of exponentials. Those can be written as exponentials of sums. So there we go. Now we have a quotient of exponentials. So we can simplify that as well and combine that. Um, next, I'm going to FOIL all of that out inside the summation and combine like terms. And now recognize that I have a sum of a couple of pieces, the second of which is a constant. The sum of a constant is going to be n times that constant. So we've come a long way. We've gotten to, to simplify this tremendously. Now, the whole point is that this likelihood ratio, we want to be less than or equal to some value k for points in the best critical region. So let's set up that inequality. We're hoping to glean some information about the critical region from this inequality. That is, some condition on all the xi's. Let's try and get the xi's a little bit more low. Take the natural log of both sides. And then I'm going to move the summation to its own side and multiply by 50 over 4 to get the sum of xi on its own. So in a sense, we've accomplished that goal that I mentioned a bit ago about getting the xi's on their own. Um, I'll do one more thing, though, and that's to divide both sides by n, because when I do that, I have a sample mean on the left. So the best critical region C is going to consist of all points where the sample mean is greater than or equal to 51 minus 25 over 2 n ln of k. So k is just some constant, n is the sample size. Notice we haven't said anything about the significance level yet. And when we choose the significance level, that would force our choice of k on us here. We were hoping for a best critical region that looked something like x bar greater than or equal to some value. And that's what we got.